before we get started, it's important to know that we always recommend that your bicycle be professionally assembled. Or if you choose to follow this video and do home assembly, we recommend that a professional bicycle mechanic safety check your bicycle for riding. Now let's get started. The tools you'll need for the flat repair are just a 15 millimeter wrench and a tire lever oh yeah, and a pump and an air pump. First, you want to shift the bike into the highest gear. And that loosens the cable. So now we're going to remove the cable from the rear wheel. So that starts by sliding this tab forward. It's spring loaded, so just hold it out with your hand. Then the cable should be coming loose a bit. So you want to grab the end of that cable with your finger, unhook it, and then pull that right out of the hub. Then you can let go there. And now you also want to pull the cable out here as well. So now you're ready to loosen the wheel with your 15 millimeter wrench. Then you can just pull it right out. Just unloop the belt, your wheel comes right out. If the tire is not completely flat, you want to take as much air out of it as possible in order to easily remove the tire. So now, it's important to keep in mind that this is a tubeless ready rim and tire, which means that the tire itself sits on a little ledge here on the rim. So it requires a bit more effort to unseat the bead of the tire. So I like to use both hands, hold the tire and the rim together like this and put my thumbs together to push that bead out of position. And you wanna go all the way around the tire, pushing that bead in to loosen it. So once you've done one side, just turn it around, do it again on the other side. This does take some effort, so just keep that in mind. Also, remove the lock nut from the valve. Now, we're ready to use our tire lever. So find that bead, the edge of the bead, and just one side of it. Hook that with the tire lever over the edge of the rim. Use your other hand to hold that bead in place on the outside of the rim, and then pull that tire lever towards you to continue to unseat the bead all the way around the tire. At this point, I like to remove the inner tube to get it out of the way. You can leave one bead seated right now if you want, or you can remove the tire entirely. I'm going to take it all the way off just to be able to better check the tire. Now that we've removed our inner tube, we can check it to see where the puncture happened. I like to put some additional air inside the inner tube. and pump it up a bit so that we can hear or feel where the air is escaping from the inner tube so we can identify where the hole is. So once you've found where that hole is, if it's on the outside of the tube, that means that something has punctured the outside of your tire. So you wanna go through and check the tire itself to see if there's something still stuck in there or whether there's a hole uh, or evidence of where something went through it. Um, you want to be careful doing this because uh, you might, if it's sharp, you might cut yourself. So you might want to use a rag or gloves if you're checking the tire like this. But I do recommend feeling the underneath underside of the tire to see if there's anything sticking through, but also visually inspecting the tire on the outside. If there's a hole on the underside of the tube, then you know you got a pinch flat, which means that the tire 
bottomed out on the rim and pinched the inner tube. In which case, you might want to check how much pressure you're running in the tire. You might need more pressure in there to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, and you might also want to just check your rim strip and make sure that your rim strip is intact. Okay, so now with your new inner tube, you want to inflate it slightly so that it takes the, sh the shape of the tire. And that way we can avoid pinching the inner tube through the process of installing it, which can certainly happen if you're not careful. I like to align the valve of the tube with the logo on the tire. So you want to identify the tread on the tire. So this is a directional tire, which means that the lines on the tire here uh, have a preferred orientation. In this case, you want the V of these lines to be pointing towards the front of the bike. So now on your rim, find where the valve hole is and just put the valve through. And now you want to do one bead of the tire. So just start with the side closest to you and then just with your hands, slip that over the rim. You're going to come to a little tighter side on the end. So just with two hands, push that over the edge. Now start at the valve again, push that in a little bit so that you can start to slip that bead in on this side and just start to work it around with both hands using your thumbs to push the bead over the edge of the rim. So once you come to this side, you can see it's starting to get a little bit tighter. So just use your hands to kind of work that valve into place to loosen it up. And then just pop the edge over. So if your valve uses a lock nut, this is a good time to install that doesn't have to be super tight. Now unthread the tip of the valve. Lock your pump in place and pump this up to the desired pressure. If you're doing more off-road riding or you're a lighter rider, you probably want to run this tire around 40 PSI. If you're a heavier rider or you're do, doing mostly road riding, you probably want to put it around the high 50s or even 60 PSI. So as you're inflating this, you want to pump it up until the bead of the tire pops into place. Uh, with a quick visual inspection, you can look for the edge of the bead here and it sh you should see it popping up evenly all the way around the rim. And um, if it's not coming up or there's one part that's set in a little bit more, you probably just want to add some air to the tire until it pops into place and then remove air to uh, achieve your desired PSI. Just lock the end of the valve down and put your valve cap back on. Now you're ready to reinstall your wheel. When you're ready, start by putting the vent belt in place so that it's seated on the front sprocket. Take your rear wheel, just get it close to where it's going to be and loop that belt in place on there as well. Now, as you're dropping the wheel in, just make sure that these slotted washers are going into the dropout. Great. Then just, uh, once you get it close to the correct position, put a little weight on it and just snug it up. We're gonna check this one more time before we're done. So now we're gonna hook up our shift cable. So just run it around. You wanna get it in between the belt and the hub like so. And also reseat this part of the housing. There's a channel here for the cable that you want to make sure it's seated in. So once you get close to the end here, just roll this up. 
pop the cable into place. Make sure that the cable is all the way seated in there, which it is. And then we're going to flip the bike back over and make sure that the wheel is totally seated in the dropouts. So with the bike upright, we want to make sure that the wheel is fully seated in the dropouts and that the axle nuts are tight. So I'm going to go back in and just loosen each axle nut and tighten it back down with my 15 millimeter wrench. And you want to tighten this enough so that it leaves a mark on your hand. Once again, with a little weight on the bike, loosen this side and tighten it back down. Nice and snug. We recommend that any work you do on your bike is checked by a professional mechanic. If you have any questions, reach out to us at info at prioritybicycles.nyc or give us a call at 917-819-1665. Thank you.